Hello and welcome back to Vinsloop Academy. This is our Splunk tutorial. In the last lecture we saw how we could install the Splunk Enterprise on a Kali Linux virtual machine. So here we are using VirtualBox where we have the Splunk Enterprise application installed and it is running on our local IP on port 8000. So now we want to set up our universal forwarder which is the one that will provide this enterprise application that we have running here with the data so that we can search and analyze it. So first of all, if you go to settings and forward management, you will see that there is nothing yet because we don't have any forwarder set up yet to communicate with this Splunk enterprise. So what we will do is to be installing the universal forwarder from Splunk.com. So we will head over to our main operation system, which for my part is Windows. And here I will go to explore and I will go to free trials and download. And then we will basically scroll down here and we will be downloading this Splunk Universal Forwarder. So we'll click download now. And normally you will need to create an account in order to be able to download, but you can just click view page source or view source code based on your browser. And then in here, we will just search for .msi. So here we get the link to the installation package for Windows for the Universal Sprung Forwarder. And if you want for, for example, Mac, you can just click .dmg or, for example, .tar if you want some other uh, file type. But we will stick with this one. And as you see here, I have already downloaded it. But basically to do so, you will just be copying the link here go into a new browser and type it in and then you will be start downloading. Once that is downloaded, you should be able to open up the installation and then we will walk through the installation together. So now that we have downloaded the Splunk Universal Forwarder installer, it's time to install this on our computer. So first of all, we'll be saying check this box to accept the license agreement. Then we'll type next. Then we'll just choose a user let's say and the username and password so we'll say like this then we need the host name and ip and the default port i'll be linking to the splunk website where you can see all the default ports for the search header the indexer and so on if you're not changing these manually they will all be the same for the entire splunk uh, enterprise so in order for us to get our ip we go into our linux virtual machine here into the terminal and here we type sudo if config enter our password and then we have the IP right here so this is where our uh, Splunk enterprise is hosted so we will type in this for our universal forwarder to communicate with this so we say 196.18.0 and then we just use the default port 889 click next and then we need the indexer to have same ip here and then just the default port again then we click next and then we click install So once the installation is complete, we click finish here, we can close this and then we need to open the services on our Windows machine where the universal forwarder is installed. And then we go down to Splunk forwarder service right here and we just restart this to ensure that this is set up correctly with the IP that we just entered and the port. So now that this has restarted, we can just close this and head back to our Splunk Enterprise, go to settings, forwarder management, 
and then this will take a few seconds for it to register so if we try to refresh and as you see after a couple of refreshes we now have one client attached to our Splunk Enterprise so this is our Windows computer that is now communicating and collecting data and sending this to Splunk. So now that we have set up the Splunk server, the enterprise server we have in our Kali Linux, and we have connected our Splunk forwarder from our Windows machine, and these two are now communicating, we are ready to move on to the next section where we are going to look into the data that is being sent. So see you next time here on Winslow Academy.